Thank you for the introduction, Kim, and thank you for the opportunity, uh, everyone. So let's get started. We'll start by bowing in. Thank you. Okay, today we're going to move. So I'm going to go off script right away and do a little bit of um, a loosening up exercise, even though the uh, notes say there won't be any. We will do a couple of moments of warming up. Um, and then we're going to move into a framework for breaking down the technique that you see in front of you when demonstrated, uh, specifically the first part. So to my mind, if you start well and finish well, um, you just kind of have to make it, you make your way through the middle, but a start, a, a clean start and a clean finish is really, is really important. So let's look at the start. When, um, when a technique is demonstrated, we typically see it initiated on the Nage side in response to the UK um, in one of six ways. There are others, of course, but there are six that, uh, that we're going to run through. And the framework that we will do today is we will execute all six as though we're being attacked in Gyakuhami, uh, tori. Okay, now, um, just for time constraints, we're not gonna move into Aihami, but they look very, very similar. So six attacks, katatetori, um, and six movements to, to start the techniques. So without further ado, uh, let's just get into it. So let's start by um, just briefly loosening up the bodies because it's first thing in the morning. So breathe in and out. In, out, in, out, pull forward a bit, in, out. Okay, big circles. And forward, back, big breaths as you do it, forward, back, left, right, left, Right. Okay, just bend your knees, put your hands on your knees and look up to the left corner. And switch and look up to the right corner. And left. And right. Okay, feet together. Roll your knees around. And your hips. Ankles. Other one. Okay, very perfunctory walk. Let's get going now. So the framework that we'll use is six movements, like I said. Imagining, I'm going to start with left hand, left hand me. I'm imagining. My opponent, my partner is grabbing me with their right hand. So we're in a mirrored stance, okay? All six movements we're gonna execute from here. So just watch for a moment, I'm gonna run you through it and then we'll do it. So movement one, irimi, just straight in. Straight in and off the line. Movement two is a pivot. Pivot and look the same way that your partner is. And then we'll turn back. Pivot and turn back. You don't need to follow along. Movement three, tenkan. Tenkan. Movement four is to switch the feet. And there's two ways of doing this, at least. Um, one is the old switch the foot back to the corner. So I'm withdrawing or retreating somewhat from my attacker. Front foot comes back, back foot comes in. We can also do the same basic thing, just going straight out to the side. 
And I think for the sake of today, that's what we will do, is just out to the side, and I've switched, so I'm now facing 90 degrees to where I was. I was looking at my partner, now I'm looking perpendicular. Okay, so those four are all to my UK's shadow side, right? The UK is grabbing here, and I'm going somewhere over here. The next two are to more exposed. I'm going in front of them. So the first one, movement five, is stepping in, stepping in here. Okay, so that I should feel a little bit like it's dangerous, right? I'm moving into their space and I have to compensate or, or be aware of that as I do. Movement six is tenkan, but it's stepping into their space and tenkan. And already my spidey sense is going way up because I'm standing right in front of my opponent, right in front of my partner in their space. Okay, so you've got to do something as you go there. As I was watching Osawa Sensei's class yesterday um, and participating in it, I, I, I was able to break down what he was doing at the initiation of his techniques into one of these six in almost all instances. Um, that may not be obvious right away because some of it was Aihami and Gakuhami and there's some things that happened there. But for now, those are the six we're gonna do. And the way we're gonna drill it is we're gonna drill each of these six movements just with our body, our footwork. Then we'll add a temi. And finally, we will do the six movements, but we will apply a technique uh, for most of us to an imaginary partner. And that technique will be katatitori kokubo. So we're gonna end up doing katatitori kokubo six different ways. All right, so let's follow along. So put your left foot forward, and I'd like to be specific about your feet. Put your left foot forward, and we're gonna start with irimi, just entering. So you're gonna slide in off the line and back. So please follow along. So irimi, one and back, irimi, two, back, irimi, three, back, irimi, four, back. Now change feet, we'll do the other side. Irimi, one, back, irimi, two, back, irimi, three, back, irimi, four, back. Change feet, left foot forward. Movement two, pivot. We'll just take our front foot off the line some, pivot and face the other way. And come back. Okay? Off the line some, pivot. Two. Pivot. Three. Back. Pivot. Four. Back. Change feet. Right foot forward. Off the line a bit. Pivot. One. Back. Pivot. Two. Back. Front foot off the line, pivot. Three. Back. Pivot. Four. Change feet. Next, tenka. Bit of a shuffle with your front foot, or depending on your style, however you want to do it, but the idea is we're going to tenka. Okay, so let's go. Tenka, one. Back. Tenka, two. Back. Tenka, three. Back. Tenka, four. Back. Change legs. And again, I'm imagining for the sake of this training today that my wrist is being grabbed by someone in Gyakuhami. But basically, this framework works whether it's a wrist grab, a punch, a kick, yoke movement, whatever. The attack doesn't really matter, but for the sake of this exercise today, I'm just imagining Gyakuhami. Okay, so anyway, we're on Tenkan, right foot forward. This is the third move. Okay, one, Tenkan. Back. Two. Back. Three. Back. Four. Okay, change feet. Let's move on to movement four. Um, we'll start by going back to the corner and then we'll go off to the side. So we're gonna do this a couple different ways. So the first one, take your front foot, step it to the corner and bring your right foot in and come back. Okay, so left foot goes back behind, right foot comes in. Pause for a second. This is not, I'm not going straight back, okay? Typically, we don't do that. It doesn't really accomplish much other than you've backed up one step on the train and coming towards you. Okay, so once more. Front foot comes back, right foot comes in. And once more. Front foot back, right foot comes in. Let's do the same basic idea, but we'll just go out to the side. Front foot goes out to the side, right foot comes in. We're now facing 90 degrees to where you are. Once again, 
straight out to the side, change feet. Once again, change feet, three. Once again, change feet, four. Okay, other side. Right foot forward, going to the back corner, the right rear corner. Right foot goes back, left foot falls. And back. Right foot goes back, left foot falls. And back. Three, right foot back, left foot falls. Four, right foot back, left foot falls. Okay, same thing, but we're just gonna go straight out to the side. Okay, right foot out to the side, left foot in, turn 90 degrees. Two. Three, right foot out, left foot in. Four, right foot out, left foot in. Good. Okay, so those are all to the uh, partner's shadow side. Now we're going in front of them. So for number five, we're going to step in with the back foot and sweep the other one behind you slightly. Okay, so left foot forward, right foot steps in, left back, and back. Two, right foot in, left foot back. Three, right foot in, left foot back. Four, right foot in, left foot back. Change that. Right foot forward. This is movement number five. Step in, back, other foot back, and back. Two. Foot in, back. Three, left. Four, step left. Okay, good. Movement number six starts that way, and then add a full tank on. Your partner is right behind you. Okay, let's do that. So start with your left foot forward, step with the right foot, tank on. One, step, tank on. Back. Two, step, tank on. Back. Three, step. Tank on. Back. Four. Step. Tank on. Okay. Come back. Left. Uh, right foot forward. Same thing. Right foot forward. Step left. Tank on. One. Back. Two. Step. Tank on. Back. Three. Step. Tank on. Back. Four. Step. Tank on. Okay. So those are the six. Let's drill them quickly this time with an atemi each time. Okay, we're gonna change up the atemi a little bit. All right, so first one is irimi. Also, we're gonna swap sides now. Okay, so you don't get to drill one side and then drill the other side, swap sides each time. So start with your left foot forward. The first one, just watch, is slide an atemi in the face with the back hand. Here we go. Left foot forward, slide, atemi with the right. Change feet. First move, slide in, atemi with the left. Change feet. Three, slide in, punch, change feet. Slide in, punch, change feet. That's movement number one. Movement two is the pivot. For pivot, we're gonna come here and just turn back and back fist or just chop, okay? So here we go, left foot forward, off the line, pivot, pivot back and strike. Other side, right side, slide and pivot, pivot back and strike, change feet. Left, pivot, pivot back. Right, pivot, pivot back. That was movement two. Movement three, tank on. For this one, we'll leave out the strike. Just tank on, tank on. Boom. If you want to, you can turn and put an elbow in, uh, but that's not particularly orthodox, I think. So let's just leave. So once more, left foot forward, tank on. Change feet. Tank on. Change feet. Tank on. Change feet. Tank on. Change feet. Okay, movement four. For this one, we'll just come straight out to the side. This time, I'm going to skip the back one. So for four, remember my left hand is being grabbed. Left foot comes off the line. Right foot comes in. As uh, Steve Sensei pointed out yesterday, your wrist basically stays where it is if you're doing shimonage, for example. And in general, I think that's a good principle here. So leave the wrist where it is, off the line. Pop. You're putting your free hand and strike the face. Okay, let's do that again from the left. Change feet, strike right. Other side, right foot forward. Change feet, strike with the left. Left side, change feet, strike with the right. Right side, change feet, strike with the left. Okay, that's movement number four. Movement five. Let's step in to the open side. And like I mentioned, we don't like doing that because we feel exposed. So we need to disrupt the partner. So in this case, we're gonna disrupt them with an attempt. That could be a punch, 
with your right hand. It can be a shoulder inch with your right hand, whatever. So here we go. Your left hand's grabbed, step into the open side, strike. Change sides, right foot forward. Step into the open side, strike. Left side is grabbed, step and strike right. Right side is grabbed, step and strike left. That's movement five. Movement six. Left hand is grabbed, just watch once. It's step tenkan, as you may recall. As I go, I'm going to strike with my back hand. Shomenichi is good. Yoko Minichi is good because it's the circular movement to the inside. So here we go. Let's do Yoko Minichi. So step in, Yoko Men Tenkan. And then come back. Right foot forward. The left hand is ready. Step in, Yoko Men Tenkan. And come back. Left foot forward. Strike it with the right. Step and back. Right foot forward. Step, strike, ten. Okay. I know that this kind of approach really works for some people who have kind of an engineering mind and is probably just crazy confusing for others. So this is the way I approach things. So uh, let's just try to follow along. Okay, I haven't been able to watch you guys at all. So I'm just hoping that, uh, that you're getting something out of it. Um, so now we will move into these six, but we're going to apply a technique. We're going to apply katatitori kokyuho. Uh, so kokyuho, of course, is your unbalanced with a partner and throwing this way. Uh, Osawa Sensei did it last night. So let's start with movement number one. So just watch for a second. Actually, I'm going to run through all six very quickly uh, so that you can see. So movement number one was straight in. So for kokyuho, boom. Movement two is a pivot. This one's very standard for kokyuho. Pivot and back. Movement three was tenkan, also fairly standard for Tokyo. Tenkan, up, step behind the partner, back. Movement four is the foot slot, also very common for Tokyo. Foot comes out, 90 degrees, throw. Movement five may be a little trickier. You're coming inside the partner. You need to really unbalance with the hand that's being grabbed by dropping, dropping your weight. And then up, and turn and throw the way that the opponent was looking. Movement six is great with Yoko Minuchi because you've got the circular movement. Here you're being grabbed. It's easier if the person's coming in to grab with some, with some force, but you can generate it anyway, uh, even if it's static. And that is we're stepping, tankoning, dropping down, raising up, and turning around and throwing the way that you were looking in the first place. Okay, so those are the six. Um, movements apply to Tokyo. Let's give it a try. So left foot forward, left hand is being grabbed. Number one is straight in. Let's, let's go straight in, up and throw. Okay, let's do that again. Uh, let's do that again, same time. Won't switch sides every time. Keep the variables. Down a bit. So here you go, you grab, slide in and throw. Boom. Two more. Movement one, slide in, up and throw. Movement one. Slide in, throw. Good. Movement two is with a pivot. Okay, so here we go. Let's just pivot. You're facing the same way as your partner. Swing up, pivot back, and throw. Okay, movement two again. Pivot, up, throw. Two more times. Pivot, up, throw. One more. Pivot, up, throw. Okay. I forgot to switch sides, apologies. Going back to, let's just keep on with pivot. Okay, we're gonna skip number one, so pivot. You got your right foot forward, pivot, face the same way as your partner, raise up, slide behind a bit more, pivot back and throw. Okay, back, you got your right foot forward, pivot, raise up, slide behind, throw. Two more, pivot, up, throw. One more. Pivot, up, throw. Okay, tenkan. Left foot forward again. Start with a tenkan. Tenkan, follow, raise up. Bring your close foot to your opponent, back behind them, turn back and throw. And again, tenkan. Tenkan, up, behind, throw. And back. Movement three, tenkan. Tenkan, up, behind, throw. Once more. 
hand column. Unbalance up behind rope. Good. Change sides. Hand column. Raise up. Slide behind and throw. Hand column. Raise up. Slide behind. Throw. Two more. Hand column. Up. Behind. Throw. One more. Hand column. Up. Behind. Throw. Okay. On to movement four. Movement four is the foot slot. So Partners in front of me, I'm going to turn 90 degrees to them, raise up, slide my back foot behind them, pivot and throw. Let's try that again from the, this side. So left foot forward, left foot comes out, hand stays in front, raise up for the unbalance, slide behind for more unbalance, turn towards and throw. Okay, three more. Move it forward. Swap the feet up, behind. Two more. Swap the feet. Raise up. Behind. Row. One more. Swap the feet. Raise up. Behind. Row. Okay, let's try the other side. Right foot forward. My back's going to be to you. Apologies, you can't hear me. Change feet. Raise up. Slide behind. Row. Again, two. Off the line. Change feet. Up. Behind. Row. Two more. Swap feet. Behind and throw. One more. Swap feet up behind, throw. Okay, those four movements were to the shadow side, now to the open side. Movement five, like I described a minute ago, I'm stepping in. Strike's a good idea. I'm also making sure that I'm putting some energy in the grab hand. My left hand being grabbed, changing feet, drop that hand down, make it nice and heavy. Then I'm going to raise up in front of the opponent her and throw the way they were looking. From the UJ side, I grab. The Nage has moved here. Oh, look, right in front of me. That's awesome. But no, they've, they've, struck, they've distracted me with the strike. And probably more importantly, is this connection. They've unbalanced me here. Their hand now comes up in front of me and throws me back there. Okay, so that's that's what's going on in the UK side. So let's make that happen from the Nagio side. You grab, step in and strike, drop your weight into that hand. Swing it up in front of their face, turn and throw. Let's come back. Left up forward. Step in and strike. Drop up, throw. Two more. Left up forward. Step with the right stroke. Drop the left hand. Up, turn and throw. One more. Step and strike. Drop. Up. Throw. Let's try the other side. Right hand is grabbed. Step into the open side. Drop that hand down. Swing it up. Turn and throw. Once more. Step in and strike. Drop the weight. Up and throw. Okay. Two more times. Step and strike. Drop. Up. Throw. One more time. Step and strike, drop, up. Last one, big movement. Stepping into their open side, striking to unbalance, dropping the weight in my hand, swinging around in a big movement, and throwing back over there. So just watch, please. Step, hang on, drop, up, throw. That's what we're going to do. UK is going to feel this. Grab, whoa. So let's do it. Here we go. Left foot forward. Left hand grab. Step in with the right. Punch. Ten con. Drop your weight like we just did. Up. Keep the turn going. And you're facing the same way you were at the beginning. Okay. Come back. Left foot forward. Step right. Ten con. Drop the weight. Up. Turn and throw. Come back. Step. Punch. Ten con. Drop. Up. Turn. Throw. Good. Once more. Step, punch, take on, drop, up, turn, throw. All right, next one. Let's try the other side. Right foot forward, right hand's grab. Step in with the left, ten on, drop your weight in the right hand. Bring the hand up in front of your partner. Turn, throw. Okay, again, right hand's grab. Step, punch, take on, drop, up, keep the ten on going, turn going, throw. 
Two more times. Punch. Ping pong. Down. Up. Throw. Last one. Step. Punch. Down. Turn. Throw. Okay. So well done. Um, I hope you were able to follow that along. Uh, like I say, those six movements I've been able to uh, use as just little goal uh, not goal posts, but sort of markers. So when I watch someone doing a technique, I go, ah, they're doing number three. And then I can watch, and I don't, I don't, have, to, I don't have to think too much about the entry because it's just like, it just falls into one of those categories. And then it's like, I can pay more attention to what else is going on later on. I found it helpful. Um, I have a couple minutes left, so I'm just going to show you this framework applied from IHUM. All right, so um, because that's obviously half the time we're doing stuff in IHUM. So I started with the left foot forward here, and the right and left the left hand being grabbed by someone attacking with their right hand. For the sake of my mental training or imagery. I like to keep the opponent doing the same thing. So the opponent is still attacking with their right hand, with the right side. So to start, I'm just gonna change my feet. Rather than making my imaginary opponent change theirs, I'm gonna change mine. So my imaginary opponent is still attacking with their right hand. Maybe it's Tatitori, maybe it's Shonichi, maybe it's Ski, doesn't matter. But basically, I'm shifting. So my whole framework, instead of starting this way, is now I'm gonna start this way. So movement number one is still here. A second ago, it was here. Now it's here. So movement number one, you is here. Movement two is step pivot. Movement three is step tenkan. Movement four is back this way. Okay. Movement five, it's just here. Movement six is here. Okay, that was quick, but the, basically the idea is that in the previous set, when it was Gapu Hummi, anytime I initiated with a slide, if it's I Hummi, I initiate with a step and vice versa. So in Gapu Hummi, anytime I initiated with a step, if it's I Hummi, I initiate with a slide. Okay, so that was a lot thrown at you at once. Um, if, if anything you can take away from that, I'm hoping that you can see that basically, at the very least, if we're doing gyaku hami, hitate tori, you have four ways of moving to your, your partners, your attackers, shadow side, and two ways of moving to their open side that are fairly standard. We're at time, we'll bow out and then uh, we can have a, a, quick, a few minutes for questions, I believe. So before we bow out, let's uh, just do the breathing exercise again. So breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. In. Out. Forward a bit. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Once uh, again, just a huge thank you to everyone who helped make this happen and to each of you for participating. It's, uh, I think, you know, we were talking about the future of Aikido yesterday. The future of Aikido is people being passionate about it and showing up. So thank you. Is there uh, any questions or anything, comments from anybody? Yeah, um, people, can, people can write their questions in the chat box and I'll uh, read them out to you, um, Ben Sensei. Okay. Um, you're getting quite a few thank yous. Amazing class. Uh, excellent, excellent class. Ben Sensei, can I ask you a question? Please. So you're a really engaging instructor. 
Thank you, you speak really, really uh, clearly and uh, articulately about uh, all the aspects uh, of that class. Um, you, you model how you teach or how you, um, how you approach what it is that you're teaching do I uh, from somebody? Or do I practice like, it? Or? No, no, no. Do you, uh, like, how you present it? Mm -hmm. is it is it based on on your own like uh, assembling of the information yeah. or you you're following like uh, one of your primary teachers no so i mean i guess there's there's at least two aspects to the question that i'm hearing so one of them is where did i get this framework from and the framework was i was just watching and trying to make sense of the world right um okay. so that's how i broke it down and um you know, especially since doing a lot of solo practice now, which I'll be honest, I haven't been good about, um, but doing solo practice <laughs> and then thinking about and until now, um, you know, thinking about, okay, how, how can I help my own training, but also as an instructor, how can I help my students understand things when we get back? And this is the kind of thing that, um, you know, some of the people in my class are on this call now, but we've drilled over the past year. We haven't done this every day, but we did it a lot to start. And then we started applying it in, in techniques Right. So it would be like, hey, we're doing Shionage. OK, let's start with movement number four. Let's start with movement number five. And they knew what I was talking about. So it was a nice language. So that's one one aspect of the question. I think the other um, the other thing is, is about teaching methodology. And personally, I grew up trying to just watch and learn and being a visual learner as opposed to an auditory learner. So in this forum, can't do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I've had to sort of retrain my. Uh, teaching methodology to be one that I'm hoping is still transmissible via video, right? So I, I, I think that it's, it's really good as a student to really watch what's going on and try to steal technique. You know, that's an old Budo say, right? Um, and I don't believe that a teacher should overly spoon feed the students. I think it's up to the student to steal from the teacher. But, you know, as we heard in the panel yesterday, um, we should be student centric or student centric is a good thing too. And, and especially this format has forced that. Okay. So that Thanks was a lot of answer answer to, uh, to, to two parts of a question, but I'm not sure if, if that's, is that what you were getting at? Yep. Yeah, okay. it was good. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm actually Thank curious. Gotta... I'd be interested in hearing feedback from people either now or later. Um, that was 30 minutes. It was brand new to probably 90% of you. Um, and you know, I, I don't know if that was too fast or too slow in terms of here's six movements, like let's pick them up in 30 minutes. It was a lot to take in for sure. Uh, but I think um, given this is the only opportunity we're going to have for the foreseeable future to do it, I, I think it was the right way to go. Personally, yeah. I would have done the same. Thanks. That's the third time that I've run through those steps with you Ben and and they're starting to make sense oh good I'm still, I'm still not quick enough but but yeah that I, I I like that approach so it works for my brain yeah I believe a few questions and, re and repetition I believe that repetition matters um, I think if you do th something 10,000 times you can be better at it than you do it a thousand times if you are paying attention to what you're doing so you know I, I like to do things quickly and repeatedly Go ahead, Kim. Sorry. Uh, there's a question. Yeah, yeah. There's a question. Says, do you break down other parts of a technique in a similar manner? Yeah, I, I think so, but I haven't quite developed like this overarching master framework for everything else. Um, I think the middle, the middle part is, you know, there's a huge amount of variability, obviously, in the middle part of the technique. The finish, uh, I've got my own views on how how to finish a technique. Um, but I would also categorize finishes in a couple of different ways. So the way that Osawa Sensei and the way that Steve, and, uh, Steve Sensei were demonstrating yesterday um, is, is a very nice, a nice finish. There are other ways of finishing as well that I think are also good. Um, you know, so for example, you know, what, what I really see with Osawa Sensei is the supple knees and, and kind of the finish you know, here. Um, I also like a finish that is strong and extended with the back leg and the front leg is, you know, there's a little more weight on it. Um, and there's a drop kind of here as opposed to here. But that's, that's just, and I, I, I don't mean that to kind of say, hey, one way is better than the other. I'm just, I'm just trying to answer the question about, do I apply the same framework type thinking to other parts of the technique? And I would say, yes, I do, uh, to the finish. The middle part, maybe not so much. It's not as organized. Okay. Um, there's another question. Um, 
what are principles from training in Japan that you use in your dojo in Canada? Mm. Um, I would say that I stick to very common forms of the technique and in a repetitive manner. So I talked about repetition a second ago. So I'm not about let's do six different ways of, well, okay, I am about doing, let's do six different ways of doing Kokiho just now. But in general, um, that was to illustrate the framework. But in general, it's, it's uh, I would say, I'm gonna do Ikkyo one fundamental way. I'm gonna do Iriminage one fundamental way. I'm gonna do Shihonage one fundamental way. And I'm not about like, let's do it this way today and that way tomorrow and another way the next day, right? Um, so there's a core, there's a core set of techniques and I like to do them repetitively, uh, and with a lot of energy. So that's actually another important part of the, the training in Japan. Uh, and also as a side note, training in Japan is like training in anywhere. It depends on where you are. It's all different, right? So it's not like Japan does it one way training at Hombu. Um, there's a certain orthodoxy that a lot of the teachers practice, you know, kind of the doshu, weishiba party line Aikido, and then there's some stuff that's a little bit more fringe. And so even within Hombu, there's, there's a diversity. But what I took from that was there's, I like the orthodoxy, I like the speed, the energy, um, and the softness and suppleness of the UKs. So I try to apply that in my class. Okay, thank you. Um, another question is how do you keep from getting dizzy doing the number six? Uh, how do I keep from getting dizzy? Technique or? I like it, <laughs> especially as uke, right? I mean, anything with a big, with like more than one tenkan in it, you're moving around a lot, right? So it's just, you got to breathe. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's, you just got to breathe. Okay. Uh, let me see if there's anything. Do you have any, do you have any videos on YouTube? <laughs> Not of myself with this framework, no. There's a couple of demonstrations that I've done, but you know that's, you know, just regular kind of demonstration stuff, doing a bunch of techniques and okay. trying to look cool doing it. Okay. Okay. Just reading your, just reading the overall comments. They're 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 thanking you for a great class and uh, great teaching. So and um, yeah, they really loved it. So thank you very much for for um, a wonderful class. My pleasure. Thank you everybody for joining. I really do appreciate the opportunity. Uh, this has been, I think you've heard me say it before, but an amazing seminar. And uh, you know, another thing that came out of the panel yesterday was there, I think there's probably a real pent up demand, uh, not only from us as Aikidoists, but from the general public to get out and do something um, and take part in what Aikido has to offer. So uh, keep the passion going, everyone. Thank you. I got those stuff. Hey, got, yeah, got one more last question. Do you oh. have any auditory do you have any auditory students in your class uh, who are less visual? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, especially since, you know, the stereotypical Western way of teaching is, is lecture um, and we have to be explained things and spoon fed stuff. So yeah, undoubtedly I do. Um, there's a third kind of learning, right? There's auditory visual and there's tactile um, or however you want to put it. And to be honest, I talked about the visual it's really about the tactile. So that's going back to what I picked up in Japan is, you know, Seki Sensei went around and threw everybody in the class, every single class, everybody. So everybody, whether they were brand new or super experienced, got to be thrown by a Shihan. And so I'm no Shihan, but that's the principle that I try to take in my class because really that is absolutely the best way to learn Aikido is to feel it. So, okay. sorry, I kind of blew past the question on the auditory um, and refocused it on the tactile, the, the feeling, it. That, that is, that's the best way. So I don't okay. cater to the auditory. Okay. All right, thank you very much, uh, Ben Sensei. Pleasure. Um,